Hi, everybody. This is Duncan McPherson with Pareto Systems. Thank you very much for investing the time, for seeing the merit in attending this uh, initial presentation on becoming the indispensable client service associate. I know your time is very valuable, and I really appreciate that you saw the uh, value in working on the business and working on yourself. Uh, I've noticed over the years that the most effective CSAs uh, are serious students about personal and professional development. Uh, so I applaud you. Now, just while I'm thinking about it, if you're on LinkedIn and you want to stay connected with us, just join our community. Just look for me, Duncan McPherson. I should pop right up. And uh, you'll be exposed to all of the actionable proven strategies that we put on LinkedIn virtually every business day. Now, on this presentation, I'm joined by Elaine Christakos. Uh, she's also connected to us, of course, on LinkedIn. And she and I will be walking through this deliverable uh, together uh, to kickstart this overall process. Now, I should also mention. Uh, and I'll just, I'll, I'll tie this in at the end as well. But the Pareto Systems app can be downloaded onto your phone, either through uh, Apple or Google Play. And again, just to be exposed to best practices, case studies, and get uh, uh, exposed to as we work with our clients. Now, this, of course, is part one. Uh, we'll be sending you an outline of the entire series and when it will be scheduled and uh you know the good news is all of these presentations will be recorded and archived you'll all be receiving access to our actionable strategies through the pareto academy i'd like to take a moment just to pay tribute to our uh, great partnership with first trust portfolios we've been collaborating with First Trust for quite a while. And I'll mention that uh, if you like our philosophy, like our process, and you'd like to get a copy of the advisor playbook that I wrote with Chris Jepson, who heads up practice management at First Trust, then just uh, reach out to your First Trust wholesaler and they'll make a copy uh, available to you. Now, before I get into uh, a little bit of a deeper dive on the introduction of the indispensable CSA, I'd like to introduce you uh, briefly to Elaine Christakos. Elaine has been a professional development coach for 20 years. Uh, she's been working very closely with elite teams in the financial services space, and she has an unrivaled window on what separates the best from the rest, not just with the entire team, but also with client service associates that are the glue of those teams. So Elaine, let's, uh, let's say hi and we'll, uh, we'll get to work here. Okay, thanks Duncan. It, thanks so much for that introduction. And you brought up such a good point. You know, when you look at teams and all the successful teams that I've worked with over time, there's some, there's certain things that they all have in common. You know, success, teams that are truly successful, one of the things definitely they always have, without a doubt, they'll have one or more like indispensable CSAs, right? And if you look at the other side of things, those that are just not too successful, their CSA for the most part is gonna be indistinguishable. You know, it's so powerful to, you know, to ensure that you have that team and that everybody's you know, on the same page and everybody's working together, you know, all to maximize or enhance the team's efficiency, but ultimately, you know, to enhance the client experience. So well, I'd say like, whether, you, oh, go ahead. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was just going to say that that is a great point because, you know, I was, I was in Palm Springs yesterday doing a mastermind session and it's always great when one of our advisors brings along one of their team members and 
to your point about being indispensable, the best CSAs understand that the technical delivery and, uh, and ability and the core competency of the team in terms of their wealth management solutions, it's really important, but it's just not enough. They understand that they're not just managing money, they're managing a business and they're managing relationships. And all of those factors have to be treated with the same importance. I never get tired, you know, yesterday. <laughs> some, some advisors are pretty enlightened and they poke fun at themselves. And they are the first to admit, you know, yesterday one of the advisors said, hey, look, I'm just a figurehead. She runs the place. And uh, it's, it's great when I meet an advisor, and I know you do as well, that, that has that figured out. And, you know, some CSAs, they, they're, they're kind of playful about this. You know, I remember one CSA saying that, you know, my number one job is to protect the advisor from himself. <laughs> and another CSA right. who said uh, that whenever the advisor has to get the phone, the client says hi and then says, you put me through to the CSA, right, to the to the team member. Um, they know that who work and get stuff done. And the, the point here is the entire team to embrace the fact that you've got good qualities, good skills, good intentions. Let's professionalize and let's standardize all of this and turn it into an intellectual property that has intrinsic value. And let's make sure the clients understand and appreciate the value of the team fully and completely. Because, you know, I, everybody on this call knows that the, the, the industry is being commoditized and a lot of clients are starting to fixate on products, pricing and performance. Well, we want them instead to have an appreciation for the people and the skills and credentials they have, the practice and the client experience that creates, and the process that the team has put into place. That's valuable. And I'm just going to repeat that because, Duncan, it's, you're, break, you're breaking up a little bit, but you know, just want to make sure that you, you got, everybody got that, you know, we really focus on like the people, the practice and the process. And, you know, everything that we do focuses on, you know, it's all client centric. And we all, you know, really, it's all to enhance the, the value to their clients. And everything is process driven, right, to ensure that everything, everyone takes ownership of the success of the team. And, Everyone stays in their lane. Everybody knows their job, right? Everybody knows what they have to do. It's just one part of the whole big picture. You know, building out the playbook and you know your standardized of your standardized procedures so that you can you know maximize your potential, offer the best experience possible for your client. You know while enhancing your own quality of work life, right? ultimately personal as well. Are you with us there? Until uh, I think there's been some some technical difficulties with Duncan, he'll jump back in. But you know what we're what we're doing here is we're working on um, this particular this particular per, uh, webinar is formulating your plan for formulate your plan to elevate the client experience. So this is one just one piece of what we're going to be working with here. Um, so some of the I'm, things that I'm I want I, to I, I'm back by the way, Elaine. Sorry about that. Oh. Good, good. Welcome. <laughs> Excellent. So just looking at, uh, you know, some of the things to consider, some of the questions to consider when we start, you know, really diving in. You know, things to think about, you know, what do you know about your best clients, right? And not just financial information. You know, and what kind of non-financial information do you collect from, from your clients? You know, whose responsibility? Is it the advisor only? Or does everybody on the team take ownership in this? You know, and, and is everybody using it, accessing, using in a way that's beneficial to everybody? Well, 
And what's really key is that just like you all deploy a process for wealth management, there has to be a process applied to practice management and relationship management too. A lot of the teams that plateau, they kind of wing it. They don't have any structure. And because of the absence of structure, there's less order, less consistency. And process can address that. And what Elaine's about to get into in more detail is that if what you know about your clients and what's important to them is in your head, it's not an intellectual property. The moment it's captured and chronicled and invested into the relationship, now it's got real value. And as you know, your clients, I mean, some of them bear their souls to you. They tell you what's going on in their lives, in their family, in their occupation and recreational uh, interests and aspirations. And money is a means to those ends. And, you know, it's interesting about CSAs. They're generally very empathetic and they care. But when you have a process, it shows your clients that you care about what they care about. And it adds more glue to that relationship. You know, being interested, not just interesting, and having a process to drive that, that unlocks a relationship to the next level. You'd have to agree, right, Elaine? Oh, absolutely. You know, being interested. You know, example, if clients uh, often are, are talking to the CSA or, you know, any other team member, you know, even receptionists, waiting for an advisor and waiting for a meeting. You know, all kinds of talk happens, small talk, they might think of it as. But, you know, sometimes the client might start talking about his excitement over, you know, whatever grandson, Logan, just made cats on a little league ball team. Right? CSA is listening to this and talking about this and getting really into it. Um, you know, make sure that you always engage clients on, on issues like that and ask more questions and write it down, share it. So. Let's just say, for example, in the situation of advisor, you know, calls that same client in a month, starts off by asking, hey, you know, how's Logan enjoying, Logan enjoying his new ball team? You know, how do you think the clients feel? Right? They feel heard. They, they know that they're important. You know, so it's not just about, you know, what, what, what we're doing and why, but, you know, how to actually set up a process and structure, right, for gathering, collecting, using this information. Well, remember, remember, your credentials will help you attract and land a great client. But it's often the chemistry that helps you keep that client. So if you think about it, they come to you because you know how to help them become financially independent. But the moment they understand that you know why they want to become financially independent, they put more value in how you get them there. And if you look at the acronym FORM, right? So we say formulate your plan to elevate the client experience. Like we've embedded FORM into that word deliberately because FORM is the process. It's the structure. All of their aspirations regarding their family, health and wellness, security, education, all of it all of their aspirations around their occupation, right? Achieving financial independence, not outliving their money. Their recreational bucket list. That's why money is a means to those ends. So the more interested you are in why financial independence matters, the chemistry and your ability to strengthen competitor-proof relationships goes up dramatically. Powerful. And, you know, it, it truly builds a foundation, right, for client-focused fo relationships that, that truly transcend money, right? It increases, you know, like your awareness and understanding of, you know, specific needs, desires, goals, all, all of your best clients. And it allows you to, you know, truly provide customized attention and exceptional client service 
to meet their individual needs. And, you know, like you said, Duncan, I mean, it's truly their intellectual capital. Like that is the intellectual capital of your business. That's what makes you unique. Well, think about that. You know, you're a fee for service enterprise in a knowledge for profit business, right? You're not selling things. You're not a broker selling cell phones or cars. You are promoting the promise of the future. The ability for a client to look to the future with anticipation instead of apprehension. If you want your clients to feel like, you know, you've got this and you liberate them to go live their lives. These are the ways you achieve that end and, and create professional contrast. And I'll give you a couple of quick actionables before we dig deeper here. I'm sure all of you prepare a printed agenda for your advisors in advance of a meeting with a prospective client or an existing client. Right, it projects stewardship and professionalism. It says, uh, we don't wing it, we're following a process. And I'm sure when you meet a prospective client, there's a bullet, an item on that agenda that says what's important to you. Well, I'd like you to expand your thinking and change that bullet to what's important to you hyphen your form goals. And then coach your advisor when they're meeting with somebody and, and really popping the hood and establishing the fit and where the alignment of interest is to start imprinting form. You know, and ideally the advisor should be saying, look, we really want to know what matters to our clients. And part of our process is we take a really structured approach. And then they write out the acronym form vertically. And then they start taking notes in a structured way. Now, another aspect of that is I'm sure that after you have a, a meeting with a client, you send them an email summary of that meeting. It's very common for a, a CSA to provide the advisor with a talk to text uh, app. They can capture and archive that conversation and convert it to text. But here's the thing, the email summary after a meeting with a client should also be structured in form. Here's the point, and you know this, if you have a 30 minute conversation with a client, I bet you you talk for five or 10 minutes about money and the rest about everything else. Capture that and imprint form as a process. Here's what starts happening. They start to internalize this and then start to socialize it on your behalf. You know, when a client calls you up and says, hey, you gotta do me a favor. You gotta talk to my sister. Um, she has some concerns about their on. And, uh, you know, we had this great form conversation and I explained your process and she wants to meet you guys. See what's happening there. If you think about it, marketing's what you say, branding's what they hear and then relay onto someone else when you're not there. Advocacy, introductions, I'm telling you, you make yourself indispensable even more so if you help drive client acquisition and loyalty and empowerment. Well, form is a means to those ends. So just a couple of little actionable takeaways, uh, but Elaine, I'll hand it back to you to drill down a little bit further. Yeah, thanks for that. That's, and one of the things I just wanna highlight as well is this is something that is so quickly actionable and you can see results so fast, you know, using, using form. And, Probably, you know, most of you are probably using it. You already know it, like Duncan said, in, in so many ways. But to incorporate it as a part of a process, you know, a little bit more systematic, a little bit more uh, on purpose, purpose driven. Um, so yeah, we're going to drill down now. I just want to talk, like, exactly what are we talking about when we're talking about family? You know, we're talking about not just you, you probably already know, you know, who the spouse is, but do you know? You know, how long they've been together, how they met, you know, maybe a milestone anniversary, you know, children, their names, ages, 
some of the things that they're interested in, some of the accomplishments, you know, same with grandchildren, pets. How many people have, you know, their pets are so important to them right now. I know mine is, <laughs> but, you know, how many pets do they have? What type? How long have they had them? What are their names? You know, all these kinds of things, all these, all this information beyond just the standard that you're already collecting. Um, you know, as well, health issues. Are there any other, you know, special situations or health issues related to the client, related to the spouse, related to the children, grandchildren? These are things, you know, these are things that you can easily, um, you know, capture, information that you can capture, write it down, get it into a CRM. You have to remember, there are critical life events. There are moments of truth that occur in a client's life that can define your relationships. You know, one of their kids gets accepted to a great college. Uh, there's a grandkid. Sometimes these critical life events aren't positive. An illness, divorce, and sometimes even worse. You know, your clients tell you a lot. You're, you're, you cast a big shadow in their lives. I mean, if you think about this, some of you listening in right now, you've got second and third generation clients. Not many people in business can say that. And that says that they trust you. Well, the idea with form and, and what Elaine's outlined is that this enables you to pay tribute to those moments of truth and just acknowledge these critical life events not just from a tactical perspective. Obviously a critical life event, you know, somebody sells a business, somebody inherits money, that renders their financial plan obsolete. But your process puts the next piece of the puzzle together. But responding to that, you know, sending a nice card. You know, I gotta tell you a quick story. Uh, I was talking to an advisor and um, this was relayed by the CSA. Uh, client had something not very nice happen in their life. And the CSA said, you know, we should send a card and a copy of the book when bad things happen to good people. And just show them that we don't take any of this lightly. And uh, I can't tell you the impact and the shelf life the card and the book had it was just profound you know and that's on a dramatic level sometimes you know you're going to be talking to a client and you say hey how was your weekend and they say oh well you know we went to a, my daughter's ballet recital and it was just phenomenal and the advisor doesn't know that you're having this conversation and if you were to relay that to the advisor and the advisor in his or her next conversation with the client says hey Robin was telling me about your uh, daughter's ballet recital. Glad that she, she did great. You know, again, it's not a dramatic, you know, in and of itself, a, a, an episode. But as a composite, over the lifetime of the relationship, this chemistry, it, it, it makes the relationship absolutely durable. So the key here is when you identify these family life events and moments of truth, take action. Don't, don't let the law of diminishing intent rob you. Take action. Show them you care. Show them you care about what they care about. And you'll make yourself indispensable. Okay, so there you go. Elaine, you want to move on to occupation? Sure. Yeah, let's talk about occupation. You know, and again, you probably know, you know what they do for a living. You know, but do you know, know, you know, spouse and, you know, how long they've been there and some of the important items, like what do they like most about it? Uh, you know, what would they change if they could have any job in the world? What would it be? You know, or are they, are they retired? What are the goals? You know, or do they have a target date, spouse, client as well? Um, you know, maybe they have business. You know what the business is, but, you know, do you know what's really important to them about the business? How long they've had it? You know, why they have it, you know, and what are their long-term intentions? You know, are they going to sell it? Is uh, little Johnny going to get it somewhere down the road? You know, just 
ask, you know, again, just deepening the relationship, asking those deeper questions, and enhancing that connection. You know, professional education, credentials, you know, maybe they've got some successes within their industry that, you know, they're, they're very proud of, but, you know, you wouldn't necessarily know about. Now ask. You know, find out, find out more, more information and, and, you know, notice that not all information is going to be relevant to every person, but to the ones it is relevant to, you know, find out and, you know, really enhance, enhance that relationship. Now, there's a real interesting connection between family and occupation. As you know, many of your clients are first generation, successful business owners, professionals, and executives. And they've worked really hard to get to the point in their lives where they hit, you know, an inflection point where they, they now know because of their hard work and your great support, they're not going to outlive their money when they become uh, ready for retirement or moving into that work optional lifestyle. They go to work because they want to, not because they have to. Well, my point is, for a lot of your clients, they're like the 25-year overnight success story. It took a long time to get to that moment where they wake up and say, wow, my money makes more money than I do. I mean, that's what financial independence is. But here's the thing. The moment that happens, they start to think about their legacy. They start to think about continuity and succession, family investment, legacy. From a practical perspective, when you understand family and occupational dynamics, you're positioning yourself as an enterprise to not lose those clients when the money changes hands. Confucius said it best, dig your well before you're thirsty. Create a reputation and a professional brand that you have multi-generation clients. And a lot of that is driven because of form. And we see that time and time again. Absolutely. Good. So, you know, in looking at um, the next, you know, the next part of the of form, the R part, you just reminded me of, um, I was talking to an advisor just last week who was, you know, said he had a great relationship with his clients. And he, and he does. He's known them for years and worked with them for long term. You know, they've, they've got this you know, wonderful rapport. But when we got to this part, when we start talking about recreation, he just kind of like paused and he's like, I don't think I know if he has any hobbies. I, I don't even know what sports teams he might like. You know, it's just kind of like that next level connection. And he probably should have asked the CSA because you know, chances are, you know, that kind of information is a lot, it can be very easily collected and is often easily collected uh, from, from the CSA. But, you know, have it, so pay attention. When, when these issues come up, uh, you know, ask deeper questions, find out more. You know, do they play, coach, watch? Are they a huge fan of any particular sport? You know, major hobbies, interests, music, you know, traditions. Um, you know, sometimes you'll find that they're very passionate about a certain, you know, service club or charity event, charity organization, charitable organization. You, you know, maybe a client is telling you that they're going to a charitable event next weekend, just in, you know, in passing. Find out, ask more, more questions. Maybe that's something that they're truly passionate about and it's very important to them you know, tying back in to what Dustin was talking about, those moments of truth. You know, some some people, if they're truly passionate about a certain charitable organization, you know, maybe that's how you acknowledge a moment of truth in their life. You know, through through this charity, donation, donation in kind, whatever it may be. Just more to consider. And I, I don't want to steal your thunder here, um, but I remember you say, telling the story about and maybe you're referring to the same advisor here who basically was saying, you know, I, I don't really know much about my client's, you know, interests beyond money. And the CSA said, 
Well, I, I, I have all that. They tell me everything. I capture everything. And the advisor was shocked that the CSA had that level of insight. And, uh, and again, remember the theme is being indispensable and everyone's got to the varying degrees of bucket list. And if that's not sort of bouncing around in your head, if that's captured and chronicled, it becomes like true North. And you think about volatile market conditions, uh, geopolitical issues that create some anxiety. When your clients are feeling the pressure of the world, and then they think about you guys and think to themselves, no, no, my, my advisors have this. They, they've got it. Uh, I'm in good hands. That's a powerful feeling that they can have. So, uh, yeah, that, that's very, very key. And, and listen, I will, we're, we're going to pivot to money here. I will never, ever trivialize your technical ability and the value you bring to someone's portfolio and their ability to have a complete and all-encompassing financial plan. But just remember, it's being commoditized by, among other things, AI, right? Artificial intelligence, robo, and so on. But the one thing AI will never have is the EI, the emotional intelligence, and that's relationship management. So take the same level of importance that you apply to bringing value to their money, apply it panoramically with form, and uh, you'll see way more advocacy, the quality and quantity of introductions, uh, the durability of the relationships, uh, incredibly powerful. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, so money, you know, you're probably doing a great job already on that side of things. And, you know, just a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit to consider there up on the screen. But, you know, obviously we're not trivializing it, but uh, not not focus, not focusing on that side of things uh, for, for this sake anyway. Um, you know, so that's basically form what is, you know, what it is, you know, how you use it. Now, the next part of it, I just want to, we want to touch on how to actually systematically create a process for collecting and using this information. So I have to say your, your time and energy initially anyway will be best invested in, you know, really gathering and using form for your best clients. And, and how I would define probably your best clients is, are those that you truly want to replicate in your business? You know, so we want to ensure that, you know, you really know and understand all your best clients and have a process for collecting and sharing this information. So we use, um, you know, we use a template, form a form gathering template. It's a great idea to have a readily uh, available list of, you know, trigger items, trigger words on the, on a template, and all we want all teams to be all team members to be um, you know acquainted with, comfortable with the items on the template, and be ready to you know pay attention and ask deeper questions based on those headings. Uh, a lot of advisors will have, or a lot of teams will have in their CRM the headings F O R M, you know, have them fillable and shareable. So we want everybody on the team to, you know, have take full ownership in gathering, sharing, and using that form information. And, uh, you know, Duncan, you brought up the the story of that one advisor. I, I'll have to add that not only did the um, the CSA collect this information, she actually she actually would interview the advisor after meeting and ask specific questions, form related write it down, capture it, put it in the CRM. The advisor didn't even know what was going on. <laughs> I didn't even know that I didn't even know how powerful that was. <laughs> and you know, so it's so that was definitely an indispensable CSA. Yeah. And well and, and even and more that so. value and that value is incremental. That takes time to build. Uh but but if she was disciplined and followed a process, the intellectual property, the value of that information. 
You see, that information could have gone to the advisor's head to die. Really important, and it would have had the lasting value of a Red Bull if it just stayed with the advisor. But the fact that the, the CSA did a debrief and pulled it out of his head and captured it and added that into user-defined fields on the CRM, very, very powerful. Now, just a point of clarity here. You don't necessarily have to do this for every client. You know, and I, I'm not saying be disrespectful or elitist to anybody. But as Elaine mentioned, we're really focusing here on the clients that we're striving to replicate. I mean, if there's a client where you dread seeing their number on the call display or, uh, you know, their name pop up on an appointment, I mean, you live by the rules you set, but I'm, I'm just saying that you, you don't need to apply this there. And, and I don't want to get too into a philosophical conversation here, but remember, and you know this, there are clients who need you and clients who deserve you. The clients who deserve you, they, they're, they're respectful, they're professional, they're grateful, they're fun to be around, and the irony is they're some of the least demanding clients you've got. Well, I would just say apply this process there as a starting point. I mean, you know how 20% of your clients generate 80% of the business. Start with the most deserving, and if you can get to a point where you can then shift to the people who also need this, then fine, but but just make sure that this is prioritized in the right direction. Yeah, absolutely. You know, so again, just to, just to highlight, you know, ways that ways that it can be done. You know, just deepen ask deeper family questions. You know, client comes in and says, "Hey, I'm a uh, you know little bit little bit late. I had to take my granddaughter to ballet, for example." You know, ask, "Hey, ballet granddaughter." You know, how long has she been doing it? What's her name, age? You know, just ask those deeper questions. Truly, and then capture it, of course. You know, truly deepening and enhancing that relationship. So I also you know, just that, want to touch on... You know, oh, go ahead. No, sorry, Elaine. I was just going to say for, for I'm sure, everybody on this phone, uh, on this call, you know, all of that comes naturally. But you think about KYC, right? Know your clients. You think about compliance. Just imagine how meaningful these profiles are of these clients after a year or two. All of these different things. Uh, it speaks volumes about the professionalism and the strength of the relationship. So I just I just wanted to add that in. But sorry, keep going. Yeah. No, that's that's powerful. But you just tied right in. You know, some of the things that form isn't. Right. One of the major things to to keep in mind, form is not static. Like it's ever changing, and you know. So once you once you set it up, it's got to be. It has to be um, added to and changed and you know grown over time, and the relationship deepens and things change in people's world. Um, you know. Also, like we said, it's not for everyone. Also, keep in mind that if you're using a template, you know it is in fact a template not a survey um you know and i i have run into situations you know and, and this is where csa really needs to kind of take control of it sometimes is i i took uh, i talked to an advisor who looked at a form gathering template and said okay i'll ask all these questions in our next meeting I'm like wait, wait wait no <laughs> it's it's not a survey you know you can't just drill drill them with a whole bunch of questions but you know it's organic something that uh you know grows organically over time yeah, and I said this in uh, the mastermind session yesterday. Form is not a campaign and a one-off; it's a process. And right. and just just for everybody, you know, you, you you can go back to your team. You think about how many messengers are on your team. I'd like all of you to have a consistent message. So, what I mean by that is. I don't want you telling the world that you 
you, you know, you have a financial services team that helps clients achieve their financial goals. I want you all to tell the world that you're part of a financial services team that has a process in place that helps their clients achieve their goals. Get, get your people on your team to take the abstract nature of your value and make it more proprietary, more of a thing, okay? Everything is drawn out of your process. Everything is fueled by your process. Form is an extension of your process. Be a broken record. Just keep talking about your process and, and just get people to, it's like a handle to grab onto. Okay. They don't need to know everything you know, but they do need to know that you know. And when you constantly are reminding them about your process, it's like a reset in the relationship where they say to themselves in their inside voice, okay, they've got this. Okay. Powerful. So, yeah, so to be, you know, again, just to kind of summarize, I mean, to be that indispensable CSA in, in relation to this form information. I mean, some of the three, some of the keys, you know, have ownership, take ownership. Now, somebody in, on staff, you know, usually it's the CSA is going to be like kind of that dedicated person that's kind of overseeing the recording of this information. You know, so this would be making sure that the advisor is actually you know, capturing, not leaving that uh, information in his head to die, but getting it on paper. Um, you know, have a process, capturing, storing, using this information, and then you're on your way. You know, so every team member is indispensable when it comes to enhancing your client experiences. You know, and it can be one of the most rewarding and enjoyable parts of this business. You know, having that form connection, having that uh, that deeper connection with your clients, it, it's powerful and it's fun. So enjoy. Well, you talk about ownership. Um, I'm just going through a book right now called Extreme Ownership, and it's written by two uh, former Navy SEALs. And it really reminds me of how many really effective CSAs I've met, they take ownership. They, they really take a lot of pride. There's no blaming. There's no excuses. When things, you know, derail or hiccup, they just own it. They never think of themselves as victims of circumstances. They're, they're, they're victims of themselves and errors in judgment, and they fix them. They, they let that adversity uh, serve them, not hurt them. And I, I, it's just so incredibly attractive. And I'll tell you, the 10 most powerful words I've ever heard in order are, if it is to be, it is up to me. So a leadership role here. I mean, if you want to just start doing this yourself, and that let everybody sort of perk up and say, uh, what are you doing here? Well, I've, I've added a process uh, into the business to elevate the client experience. And I'm going to capture and chronicle uh, everything a client tells me that matters about their lives and that, that is important to them. I'm going to show them that we care about what they care about. I'm telling you, everybody is going to step up. Everyone just opens up like a flower in the sun. It's just incredible. And I don't want to, you know, overstate this. This is one module in the process. And I know a lot of you are doing your own personal variation of this in some way now. Refine it, optimize it, turn it into a process, give it some structure. And uh, I'll tell you, this adds to your indispensability. Um, and Elaine, I'll, I'll let you close out, but I, I'm really looking forward to the next modules. Everybody's going to receive a schedule and an overview of the topics. And again, this isn't content. These aren't ideas. This is all process driven. So you'll all receive access to the Pareto Academy. Uh, if you want to share this with anybody else on your team, uh, you'll be able to do that. And we've got all the resources. You don't have to reinvent the wheel there. Um, so uh, we really take a lot of pride in uh, helping people with this approach and uh, love to hear any feedback or commentary uh, in terms of how this has impacted your business. 
and uh, look forward to uh, our next modules in this process. So thank you, and Elaine, thank you, and I'll let you close it out. Okay, great. Thank you so much for, for joining us here today. And like this is, we truly do value your time and we thank you that you, thank you for making this a priority in your day as well. Um, by all means, do reach out if there's, you know, if, if we can help out in any way, you've got any more, any more questions. Like Duncan mentioned, this is part of, uh, you know, of a lot bigger picture. This particular webinar is just one one in a series that's going forward on the indi indispensable CSA, and look for uh, the next kind of the next uh, phase of this, and um, it should be it, it'll be out soon. So thank you again so much for joining us, and uh, we I look forward to hearing from you soon.